Hey everybody, so today is a different video. I have never done an art video on this channel before because I never had a good angle before. But I have a tripod now, so that's what we're going to be doing now. So I have nets on this. Let me see. Okay, so this video is kind of different. I don't normally make videos like this at all. Normally it's uh, pretty vloggy and pretty, like, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say regular. I would just say, like, uh, pretty abstract. Like, I don't really have a set thing, but since I've been doing art more, I was like, why not? So, this title is a little bit sad. I know what you're thinking. What the hell? <laughs> Where did this video come out of? But I was thinking about it for a long time, and I decided that it would be a good topic, so... I especially didn't want this cover photo to be sad looking, not like the stereotypical, like, well, life sucks, because sometimes life does suck, uh, but when you have depression, it's almost a necessity and a requirement to think of at least one good thing a day, and I know, I know, I know, it's super hard on a day-to-day -day basis to find something slightly less depressed, something to be slightly less depressed about. But you need to. I have issues with being motivated because motivation is really hard to bring up. I have issues with staying on track because when you have a brain that's constantly trying to shoot you down, keeping one thing in your hands like holding a motherfucking fish. And not just any fish, holding a bat fish, something that I don't like. So, a bat fish that you pulled from the bottom of the ocean, something gross, something that feels like custard in your hand, something that you're having a hard time holding on to because it just keeps wanting to jump out of your hand and you're just like shit. Being depressed is like being a flame and having a big mason jar on top of you. And the longer you stay in the jar, the more and more you try to burn what's underneath you and you become weaker. So it's really hard. It's really hard to find motivation in that. Okay. This is... <clears throat> Be free, demon! Um, depression and anxiety are invisible illnesses that are shamed and blocked out. Because you can't take a mental health day or lay down for a depression nap. It can be emotional, it can be sad, or anything else. Or even thoughts of like, I'm being selfish and I'm being a quitter. Um, it is an invisible illness for men especially because it is taken so toxically and toxic masculinity really tries to cancel it out. Men can't have feelings, blah, 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 which I don't believe is true, but... I just wanted to open up a conversation about it because oftentimes you don't really see what's going on and you don't really know the whole story until it's done with. And most of the time the done with part comes with either opening up a depressed person's suicide book and reading a lot about that or it comes from having them open up to you or it comes from having a depressed person die. And that is not where we want to end up. The end game right now is to have us all live a good life, live a normal, motivated life. And sometimes, a lot of times, that's really hard to do. So I want you people, a, chal a challenge for you. I don't want you to push yourself to make it to the next day. I want you to take it minute by minute, hour by hour. Like, if I can get this project done, I can go do this. If I, you know, if I start crying, if I have a meltdown, who cares? Get up, come try and try again. Because that in itself is really hard, but it gets easier the more and more you think. You'll start to think of it less as minute by minute and more hour by hour, day by day, year by year. And that's when it really feels good, is that for like a little, a little portion of your day, you're finally not focusing on, if I can get to the next minute, I'll be okay. You can get to, if I get to the next week, I'll be okay. If I can not conceal my emotions and pretend like they're not there, but if I can tone them down enough so I can think and I can focus and I can practice and I can work on schoolwork and work on homework and work on regular work, then everything's going to be okay. And that's kind of where you need to go. You need to build it up small because I don't care what those inspirational videos say. Be Like having yourself push to the brink of exhaustion, that is not thriving. That is not living that is dying. 
So people who push themselves and refuse to take breaks are in fact more damaged individuals than us that decide that no, no, we really can't push ourselves anymore. We need to go lay down because if we don't, we're going to push ourselves even more and it's going to make it worse. So I'm, I applaud you people that know what uh, when it's appropriate to take time out of your day, time out of your schedule, to relax and focus on yourself instead of focusing on everyone else because they don't matter. They don't matter. They don't. They don't matter because it's your health that you're focusing on. It's not their health. For a couple hours out of the day, it's yours because you live in this body and you need to take care of it for the rest of your life. So it is the only body you are ever going to have in this lifetime. A lot of issues that I get confronted on is relationships because I have a relationship blog that I help take care of. But people often are like mental illness really impacts my relationship and I'm not saying that it doesn't because it definitely does. And it makes it so much harder because like, for example, if you're taking care of a partner that is has a lot of mental illness issues, you can sometimes feel... Uh, like you're not important, which is, I think, kind of funny. Not as like a ha 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 funny kind of way, but as in like a, as in a sad funny kind of way. As in like a, damn, I didn't realize that this could be this hard for you, and this could be this hard for me to figure out and how to, how to fix, and how to go back on, and how to reprogram ourselves to try and do better. And a lot of times at the end of the day, it's really hard not to. It's really hard to try to be like, hey, we need to step back and help this person before we can help ourselves. And a lot of times you feel selfish. You feel really selfish as the person in the relationship who has all these issues because you want to enjoy that. Like, that is your main thing. It's like, they're here and you're like, I want to enjoy them while they're here. And then, like, 20 minutes before they leave, you're bawling your eyes out because you're like, I don't want them to leave. This is like a good break. This is a nice break for me out of my day where I felt good about what I was doing and now it's gone and I'm so sad about it. And... I guess this feeling come with a lot of guilt and come with a lot of shame because you feel bad. You're like, I don't want to guilt over them into staying. But you also know that they need to take care of other stuff at home and that they have another life besides you. And that sometimes is a really difficult thought, I guess. It's not difficult in like the this is hard sense. It's difficult in the sense of what am I going to do next is kind of kind of what I'm talking about, kind of what I'm talking about here. Um, depression can, in some cases, really negatively affect relationships. For example, uh, a lot of my breakups have been because of depression and stuff like that. Not necessarily something that I did or I said or just like my dep depressed demeanor made them feel less. And that oftentimes is a very hard competing factor with a lot of people, so they don't want to have to put up with someone else's mental illnesses, which is crazy to me because, like, when you have issues like that, you know it's super hard to be, like, like, to put up with it yourself. So when someone tells you that it's not okay and that they don't feel like putting up with it themselves, that kind of just puts a little drop in your whatever bucket. I feel like relationships are not a fix-all. They definitely are not. The partner that you have is not going to be suddenly cured because you two are together. No matter what romantic comedies and John Green tries to brainwash you into thinking. A lot of times it's really hard. It's super hard to be like happy and content all the time and it's really hard to be happy and content with someone you love because a lot of times they're the person you feel the safest with. So you feel like you can expose yourself more when they are around because they're around. So I don't know. I'm going to get a little bit out of the piece. So for this uh, video, I decided to do a tiny batfish in my hand. And unfortunately, the batfish does not look like a batfish at all. Uh, it kind of looks like a frog. So do with that what you will. I actually, you'll notice that I did two paintings at, uh, that were of the same concept. One of them was in gouache on black paper. And I really did not like this piece. I hated this piece because it looked so bad. And it, like, I see it in the garbage over there and I'm like, I just want to throw it. I want to set it on fire. Like, I hate it. 
because it doesn't feel like an achievement when I look at it. It looks like a, like a, something that I don't want to have in my life anymore because it's taking up space and it's making me sad, so. I also did another piece where it was on a white piece of paper. Um, and then I think, I don't remember what the last one, I don't remember what the last one is. That's really terrible to say, but I don't. Um, I think the last one was... I was trying to draw someone with a block on their shoulder, but I don't think I did it right, and I think I ended up deleting the clip because I was like, I hate it so much. Uh, but I remember, hold on, let me see. Yeah, so I was trying to draw someone with weights, weighing them down, and that's kind of when I realized, like, this piece isn't working, and that's okay. I still kept it in there because I thought it was important. But um, a lot of the times when you're an artist and you work for yourself, and you do a lot of your editing yourself, you start to pick up stuff that you don't like. And a lot of times it's not like a, oh, well for me it is. It's like a, oh, I don't have the ability to work on this right now because I can't. And this is something that I don't know how to do and I don't know how to execute it properly so I'm not even going to try. And that's kind of like my ending factor for some of my pieces is like, I can't fix this. <laughs> it's like, I tried so hard on this piece. I like know what I want. I know what it looks like in my head. But I don't know how to put it on paper and that's okay. That's something that all artists go through, and I feel like it's really important to show those failures because I had two of them in this video. Failures and fuck-ups are building blocks, and a lot of times they seem super, super, like, upsetting, and I never want to try again, but then also they're like, okay, how can I fix, how can I practice more to get this angle right? Like, the angle of the, this is what I was struggling with, is that the person had their head up like this, and I don't know how to draw this. <laughs> so I was like, oval face? How do I... Uh, jaw stuff like that so I was trying to do a uh, perspective where I put the dot and then tried that as you can see the face looked really like deformed it was like Mah! but that's kind of what I was thinking about doing didn't work so I quit which is fine quitting is okay no when to quit no when to be like that's enough I've done enough on this piece it's not worth it anymore um, I think it's a really important lesson to do, is to just realize that uh, sometimes the piece is not worth it, sometimes the piece is way too much, and you just gotta scrap it. So, another random thing that I'm gonna include is the materials that I used on this piece. So I used, what's it called? There's a hair in my mouth. I think it's called Canson. Okay, I used these brand of sketchbooks, which I really like. There's Strath, there's Strathmore, Strathmore, Artigan, Artigan drawing paper in coal black, which I really think is, think is fun. I like drawing on black paper. I think it's really good. I think it's good practice. But am I good at it with gouache? No. I kind of got the idea from Audra Claire, and I thought that it was really cool. And then I decided that I can't do it, so I'm not going to. And then I used a mixed media sketchbook, which was really awesome. And also, I tried out these prong watercolors. So I'm going to have a full watercolor review on it next time you see a video. So hopefully that'll be. But I got the prong oval 8, and I saw it at Michael's, and I was like, I just saw a review from Emily Artful on this. I'm going to get them. And these watercolors are so much better than my Reeves. I spent about, like, $23, $30 on the Reeves. But then again, hold the video for that. Get into that later. But yeah, thank you guys so much for sticking by, whoever is here. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. This is kind of one that I was like motivational and I felt good about it, which is difficult when you're a creator because a lot of times you're like, I don't want to do anything with anything ever again. I also want to apologize real quick for the light quality because I don't really work with a lot of light in my room. A lot of my voiceovers are filmed in the dark. <laughs> Cause, not because of any particular reason, but more like I just like dim lighting, and that's kind of how my room is. So if I if you see that a lot, I'm trying to get better at the whole light setup. I also got a tripod to film this with, so I ran out to Target at uh, nine at night, and I was like, Target closes in an hour. Let's get a tripod. So I show up there with my like thirty dollars in hand. They're like, the tripod is fifteen. I was like. Oh, this is my life. This is beautiful. So I grabbed the tripod and I'm like skadoodling real quick and I was like, this is not, this is the height of luxury. Um, so I was super ecstatic about that. 
And now that I have a good working tripod, I don't have to freaking prop it up on an old tripod, which I'll show you in another video, because it's just just frustrating. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, talk to you guys later, and enjoy the rest of the video without me talking. Goodbye.